Dobre Dorshli, or welcome. This week has really marked the beginning of the change in the seasons. Not that you'd know it today in this spectacular sunny weather, but last night was our first night where it dropped down below 10 degrees at night again, which means that it's time to get the full harvest of potatoes done and a lot of little jobs to do in the garden. Bok, I'm Mandy O. This is Grow, Make, Cook and welcome to my garden. I grew up in Australia in a permaculture family, but after we got married, Mr O and I moved here to his home country of Croatia. I am a passionate and hands-on homemaker and gardener, and I love life's simple pleasures. So join me on my journey, and together we can learn to grow, make, and cook. The changing weather and light levels have marked this, the fourth week in August or Kolovoz. These here are one of my secondary tomato crops. This is a little tomato, sort of a small Roma style tomato. It's called Fistaccio and it's quite a nice snacking tomato. Mm. And while these are and have been lovely, the issue is that None of these tiny little flowers and fruits that are just forming are actually going to have enough time or enough sunshine to ripen. We're now losing about three minutes a day um, and so the days are rapidly getting shorter and these guys need lots of warm sun in order to ripen the fruits. So what I'm doing in order to facilitate that is just picking off any little flowers and any tiny little fruits that I don't think are going to have time to ripen and form. And so by doing this, I am making the plant focus its energy on ripening the fruit that we already have. And hopefully we'll still get a bit more of a harvest out of this lot. The other thing that I'm doing, which may seem drastic, is actually taking off a lot of the lower leaves that are covering the fruit so that I'm stripping away all the barriers to sunshine because I want to give these darling little tomatoes the very best chance of ripening. Now I'm not removing all the leaves, they still need that to feed the tomatoes and to grow, but I am removing a large percentage of the leaves lower down so that more air and light can get in and ripen up those fruits quicker. One thing that has really surprised me is my rhubarb. Now, the leaves on this one may look quite bug damaged and they are, but I planted this one and the other little one over there at the same time, and I bought them the same size, both in tiny little six centimeter pots, and I planted them out in the same week, admittedly, not identical timing. But the main difference here is that this one, this much bigger, much healthier one, is in semi-shade. And the other one over there, actually much more closely follows the rules that people think of when they're planting rhubarb. It's in full sun, I water it regularly, but I don't let it get waterlogged. Whereas this one right here next to my lemon balm gets shade most of the day. Um, it's under a bit of tree cover, so it gets a lot less rain and it's thriving. It's much bigger, leafier and healthier. Now, I haven't actually picked any rhubarb at all from either plant this year um, because you should never pick rhubarb in its first year. You'll exhaust the plant and it'll just die out and it'll never produce very much then. But this is looking really promising. And also, like I have, might have more opportunities for growing rhubarb in shadier parts of the garden. My 
Your tomatoes are not the only thing that's benefiting from a bit of cutting back right now. This is my lavender and it's flowered its socks off for the tiny little plant that it is. But the flowers are all pretty much spent now. So I'm cutting everything back to the new growth, which is the first set of leaves. I'm not actually cutting it back any harder because you don't want to cut into the older wood, the brown stalky bits, because sometimes lavender won't regenerate from the woody bits. So I'm just cutting down to fresh leaves. There we are. That's a little job done. Now I'm not going to waste these. These still have a lot of fragrance. They're lovely. Um, and you can hang them up, dry them, and then use them just in your clothes. A lot of people would make a scent bag, like we've done before, um, just to keep them in. Mmm, summer harvests. potatoes have definitely gone completely over. There's really not much in the way of green growth left really so I've maybe left it even a little bit late. And these are the same potatoes that I robbed before so I have already taken a good chunk of the harvest but this is the time because these are a main crop potato to really dig in and take these out. Oh yeah, they look pretty good. Some little ones, oh that one looks like he's gotten a little bit of something nasty. I didn't earth these up quite enough, that one's gone all green, so these will be poisonous and not good to eat. So those actually, that are quite green, are actually going to go into the compost. Unfortunate. So, because some of these spuds are actually a little bit sick looking, they are going to need to be used up quickly and these are not going to store. Some of the others, which look a bit better, more like the ones I stole from the plant earlier, um, might store, but it's not worth the risk when you have a couple of sick potatoes in your batch. You should always eat the ones up that look poorly first. Another thing that has had very mixed results this year is my dry bed. I planted three artichokes, one of which looks like he's doing okay, the other which completely died and is there's nothing left of him, he's dry and crumbly, and one that's managed to survive but is not looking very good. The oregano and the thyme have really thrived but unfortunately my poor Dalmatian Campanula, this glorious little plant that came from here, well from the mountains on the coast, has completely died. I've watered it and tried to bring it back but there's, there's literally nothing there, there's no, no hint of life left. I think that one, I'm going to call that one a loss. The last thing in this dry bed that seems to have really thrived is this, my rosemary. 
which is delightful. I'm going to have to cut it pretty hard now though, ready for winter so we can dry some for winter use. All in all, I think my little dry bed here has been quite the success. Maybe not a hundred percent success, but there are things growing now that weren't before. It's been a good year for herbs too, which has been great for the kitchen. I am adoring my little wildflower posies. This is yarrow that I've picked from just here and it's delightful stuff. The visit to Kew and seeing all of those beautiful beds planted with things that I thought of as wildflowers really freed me up to choose a little bit more wild combinations for the things that decorate my home. But with that in mind, I think that's about all we have time for today. If you like what we're doing, please like the video and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. If you want notifications, use the bell icon below. And until next time then, Dobby Genia.